Hello again and welcome back. Now, in the last video, I took a string quartet that was recorded directly into my door, exported a MIDI file and imported that file into my notation software. With quite a few simple rules and routines, it didn't take a great deal of preparation to create some parts. And with a little more tidying up, the parts would have been ready for real players. Take a look at the video I'm talking about here if you haven't seen that already. In this video, however, we're going to get a little bit more complicated. I'm taking a more involved piece using all the instruments of the orchestra and I'm going to try and create some parts. In the professional world, creating parts for real players is usually left to the music copyist, someone who's principally employed to prepare the music for real players. They would also create reduced parts sometimes within theatre productions, for instance, that would be a piano conductor's score. My aim here was to create a score of a short ballet that I wrote and that I had created directly in Cubase. Yep, I did a sketch of what I was doing first, but that was usually a melody and a handful of chords to help. The actual orchestration was put, put together directly inside the door. In this computer-aided world in which we live, using the excellent recording software we have and the computer-aided notation software in MIDI, you'd think it would be straightforward to create parts. But that's just a myth. Take a look at how I went on. In a previous video, I exported a MIDI file from a Cubase piece of music into a notation software. And we looked at the various problems that that brings. Um, this time, what I want to do, I want to export a much more complicated piece. And um, you'll see in the screen in front of you uh, 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 something that I wrote three or four years ago, I think now. Um, and um, I can tell that by the, the, the state of the, um, the template at the time. And it didn't have the sort of things that I have at the moment. Um, um, it it's, goes through various uh, um, paces, various tempos. Um, I didn't write it at all with a view to having real people play it. Um, and that's going to cause me a problem. Um, let me, before I go any further, let me just give you a flavour of the different styles that's used in this particular piece. So we start out with something quite melancholy. So some sustained strings, um, some woodwind doing their thing. I think there's a French horn in there as well. Goes from that, um, we add more strings and it swells big time. It then goes through one of those drumming sections. down a great deal to something much more delicate. And we then move to some kind of ostinato type section that builds and builds. So it has lots of dynamics and there are lots of instruments. Now, one tip, um, when if you compose like this um, and you think um, that it may get round to being played by an orchestra, if you're lucky enough, then you would employ um, a copyist. And doing copyist type work can be an absolute nightmare um, if the composer has been composing directly into the door. Um, like I've done here. Um, and the copyist then has to prepare parts for real players to play. And I want to demonstrate the sort of mess that you can end up in. 
Now, um, what, I, what I'm going to start to do, I'm going to, first of all, to export um, this file as a MIDI file, um, as an untitled MIDI file. I'm going to ignore all the export options uh, because they're not relevant to what I'm trying to do. Um, and then if we just minimize that and then we'll open up this file in Dorico, which is my um, notation software. I'm sure Sibelius will do exactly the same from what I remember when I used to use it. Look what we've got though. Let me just make that a little bit bigger. In fact, we'll have, um, we'll put it into gallery view. It's a little bit easy to read. Now, um, other than some of the notes, going a little bit closer there, other than some of these notes looking um, as though they're full of rests because it's trying to replicate um, articulations that are used. Um, when, when the piece gets a little bit more complicated, um, look for instance at this area here. If I could zoom in a little bit closer for you. Um, that there, at the bottom there, is a harp part. Well, it clearly isn't a harp part. Um, if we move to somewhere that's a little bit more busy. Just down there, for instance. Um, yeah, you see the point I'm trying to make? It's an absolute mess. Now... You could spend a lot of time, if you've, um, if you've written the piece and you know it particularly well, you could spend a lot of time correcting all this. That's fine. There's a couple of things you could try and do, but I'm saying could because it's not going to be that successful. Um, in the previous video, this is what I did. So let me not save that. We could go back to the um, Cubase file. Um, and we can um, select, let's select all the midi that's involved in this file and yes there's a lot of it um, and we could start by quantizing it now i know that the um the minimum denominator from a quantizing in this particular piece would be semiquavers or 16 notes 16th of a note um and we could quantize everything that um I didn't select that, did I? Let me just do that again. So select all that MIDI data. Hit Q to quantize and it quantizes to 16th notes. It won't make a massive amount of difference. What I could also do and what I did last time, which helped enormously, uh, was go to um, a function here in Cubase, which I'm sure is available in all doors. Go to the uh, legato function and particularly when it comes to things like uh, strings if we were to open up um, that area there you will see now that that little string section um, all notes fill out the bar and overlap as well uh, let me just play that so you can see what i mean yep okay that's fine so um, by quantizing and by using the legato function helps. Let's see how much it helps, shall we? Let's go back to file. Let's go back to export, export the MIDI file. Uh, we'll call it untitled, put it onto my desktop, replace the previous one. And let's say, let's see what we have this time. Oh dear, there's not a great deal of difference. And there isn't a great deal of difference because, let's put it onto gallery view, because of the length of quantization that I've used. And if I was to play this now, I would need to, to get it to replicate anything like the Cubase file. I would need to spend a huge amount of time mapping the instruments um, in Dorico in this instance or Sibelius or Finale, whatever you use. 
mapping the instruments um, as they would be played in the orchestra. But of course, if we look at this list of instruments, then it's going to be exactly as, it's going to be exactly as what was left in Cubase. And because I was using um, the Albion 1 library from Spitfire Audio, you can see we've got Albion High Long. So that's basically um, a woodwind patch um, of all woodwinds that plays high long notes or high short notes. Well, this is no good to an orchestra whatsoever. Now, um, if you were to use uh, things like, um, or libraries like BBC Symphony Orchestra, um, you've still got longs and shorts. If we, if we look here at um, these these horns, horns long, um, horns legato, um, a trumpet legato, BBC SO trombones longs, um, Albion low shorts, clarinet longs. Well, all this has got to be combined down into real players because whether it's long notes or short notes, it's going to be one player that's going to be playing them. So to try and export um, any kind of recording like this directly into um, any notation software is really not going to work. No matter how much quantizing you do, not a ha no matter how much using any kind of legato function, it's not going to happen. But you know what? It is going to happen. In the next video, I'm going to make sure that I prepare the file in a very, very different way. I'm going to give you five or six tips on what to do before you export that MIDI file. And then when importing into Dorico, is it in Finale? Is it in Sibelius? Not sure. But in Dorico, there's a magic tick box to make sure everything goes much more smoothly. See you next time.